what are we talking about today, Karen? It's my understanding we're going to be talking about our native flame azaleas. That's my understanding too. And my name is Kim Hange. I'm a naturalist and hike guide here in Graham County. My education is as an entomologist and um, a pest control expert. I'm Karen Taylor. Mom and Dad started Taylor's Greenhouse in 1965, so I'm second generation owner. One of our loves is the native flame azaleas. Mom and Dad started in 1965. Dad purchased um, permits from the local forest service to harvest cutback flame azaleas, native rhododendron, and mountain laurel. We traded those, or bartered, to the wholesalers in Knoxville in Georgia. And then we also sold them here um, in Graham County at the nursery. Karen, um, I would like to pick up some more flame azaleas while I'm here at the nursery, mm -hmm. um, but would it be better for me to pick, pick up small ones, which obviously are gonna be a little bit less expensive, but how long do I have to wait until they're gonna bloom? You have to wait probably, I'm going to say, four to five years on this. Um, they're not instant gratification as far as seeing a, a blossom. Your native flame azalea grows very shallow. It likes a dapple shade or a wooded area, but a, a nice drainage. Um, it's really according to you, but this size would transplant better, and I think it would take off and grow better for you. And what time of year is the best for me to put it in? Either early spring or late in the fall. Um, keep it watered well. If you put it in now, my suggestion would be water it every afternoon because it's going to hold down longer through the night. Okay. Nice Great. wooded soil. Um, you don't want to add fertilizer to it um, because being a native plant, it doesn't need that. It does like acid such as pine needles or pine bark to lower the pH. Well, you know, I have a whole garden at my house where I've been planting different types of native azaleas. And uh, the southeastern native azaleas in general like moist, wet areas. But the flame azalea that we have here is the only southeastern azalea that actually does well in dryish soil compared to all the other azaleas. And so I want to make sure to make my, my new azaleas happy. Um, they are one tough plant. I and mean, they normally grow right at the top of the mountains, right? You are correct, yes. And they like that slope so they will drain well. Now I've seen them in part shade, part sun, right on the edges of, of the trees. Mm -hmm. But where should I plant them if I want the most blooms? Probably in a nice area that is along the edge of the wood that has a dapple shade. They love morning sun, afternoon shade. So should I mulch them? very lightly and that I would do with pine needles because you really want to see the top of the root system on the flame azaleas. When I say they grow really shallow, they do grow really shallow. So when we're planting, I know my other azaleas, when I plant them, since they're all in the rhododendron family, I have to put a mound of soil. I dig a shallow hole and then a mound of soil. And with my other azaleas, I kind of push them down halfway, leave the top of the root ball up about this much. And then I put a light layer of, of mulch on top of that. Would that be the way I would do a flame azalea? Very light layer of mulch, yes. Being in this rocky area that we are, that gives it the good drainage and you give it that amended soil so it should be happy there. That makes a lot of sense. Well, I have had people ask me um, whether they can take a flame azalea back down to southern Florida or up to New England. And I think that like with all plants, uh, plants are happiest in an environment that is as close to where they grow naturally as they possibly can get. However, azaleas are fairly adaptable, flame azaleas particularly so. Um, northern Florida, is about as far south as you want to get. 
with a flame azalea. Um, and then you can plant them as far north as Connecticut. Uh, without too much of a problem. What you have to take into account is how cold it's going to get in the winter and how hot and sunny it's going to be in the summer because they don't want to bake. Even though I said that, that you know they like dry soil more than the other types of native azaleas, they still do not want to bake their roots or their leaves. They prefer to have cool roots versus cool leaves so you need to be able to work it out so that if you're in a southern climate, you want to plant them more in the shade. And if you're up in Connecticut, you can get away with planting them more where they're going to get full sun all day. And talking about the color of the flame azaleas, they range basically in this area from a yellow to a deep red. I'm going to say 95% of them is orange, which the flame Azalea is named for. In being named, the Taylor's Orange that was named on the Hooper Ball came about through um, Rebonda Williams and the uh, Graham County Travel and Tourism. And again, it went back to my dad, my mother, Taylor's Greenhouse, and again, starting in 1965. Um, Mom donated a series of flame azaleas to Graham County to be planted in the area. And in the meantime, um, they pursued the award and naming of the Taylor's Orange. So if you plant seeds, can you guarantee that the color is going to be the color of the plant that you got the seeds from? No. You cannot, if you air layer an azalea, you can guarantee the color, but as far as planting the seeds, they truly do their own thing. I have taken, I've seen seeds come off of a deep orange and be yellow, red, and orange when they were propagating and came. So there is not a guarantee. Um, they have a mind of their own as far as what they do when they propagate. But um, air layering and seeding are the two best ways to propagate native azalea. Of course, most people are used to planting things with seeds, but when you're dealing with woody shrubs, there are other methods of propagation where you can actually get a clone basically, of the, of the plant that you want. And one of the ways of doing that is what you just mentioned, air layering. So how exactly do you do that successfully? Normally when I'm going to air layer, I would do a larger flame azalea and just scrape right where there is leaf section coming out and actually lay that on the soil and pin it or lay some soil and a stone on it if it is out in the woods. Um, and usually within about six months, you can go back and take that, cut that from the mother plant and have a clone of that plant. Now, will I mess up if I keep checking on it over that six months? I would not unsecure it because that's going to, every time you do that, you're sort of taking up the moisture and where it is attached to the soil to get that root system. So I would give it a few months and then check on it. So patience is the word. Patience is a virtue, yes. Kim, could you tell us something about the pest that might um, affect the flame azaleas or attack them? I can. Um, being a pest control expert and taking care of people's lawns, I, I run into a lot of insect pest problems. And the thing to remember about flame azaleas is they are tough plants. If they're happy, you're not going to have many pest problems with them. If you plant them well, if you make sure if we're going through a drought, they're watered well, um, they're really not going to give you much trouble. But just like human beings, when they get worn down or their immune system isn't the way it should be, uh, they can become vulnerable. And there are four main pests that can give you trouble with azaleas, and that includes our flame azaleas. Uh, one of them is something called an azalea caterpillar, and that is a brownish-black caterpillar with yellow and 
red stripes. So they're really pretty caterpillars, but you do not want to see them on your azalea plant. Um, they're, they're sort of like the tomato hornworm. They can move in on your azalea plant and um, defoliate it in a couple of days. But the cure for them, since they're so easily seen, is to literally take a, a garbage bag and pick them off the plant. Don't worry about spraying the plant. Uh, they, they start in a cluster and you just roll them right off the leaves and into a bag and, and put them somewhere else. Um, but there is the azalea caterpillar. There's a azalea bark scale and azalea leaf miner caterpillar. Those two both are such good survivors that if you end up with either of those pests, on your flame azalea, the best thing to do is take it to your cooperative extension service and let them take a close look at it. There are certain times of a year where those two pests are vulnerable to general insecticides, and that's the time of year you would want to spray them. But I have never experienced those on a healthy azalea. And the last pest is one called an azalea lace bug. And it gets its name because the wings look like delicate pieces of lace. And they are like aphids with lacy wings. And uh, the azalea lace bug is very easily controlled with any moderate general insecticide. The same type of thing you would use for an aphid will take care of the problems. So those are the insect pests that you really have to be aware of. But there are funguses and diseases that can be problems too. And azaleas prefer living in humid environments. So what diseases and funguses are you aware of that people should kind of watch out for? Basically the root rot, which is if it is too damp or in a low-lying wet area is one of the most serious problems with azaleas. Other than that, I'm not seeing a lot of bacteria or anything like that that affects the native flame azaleas. Sounds like an excellent plant to have in a garden, really. It's a wonderful plant to have in the garden. Now that we've talked about the pest, can you tell us some about the good bugs? Well, I'll tell you one thing that I just love about flame azaleas. I mean, it's so exciting, but you have to understand that I love bugs anyway. But azaleas, when they're in bloom, um, they're a little different than most plants. And they have a style and a uh, stylus, let me think, stigma and stylus that come out of the center of the flower. And it makes it very difficult to pollinate so that a honeybee, for instance, would not be able to pollinate a native azalea. But we're so lucky up here, and this is one of the reasons I like to have them in my garden, is that they've discovered that what pollinates a native azalea the best is a butterfly who hovers and is constantly flapping its wings in constant motion. And it stirs up the pollen so that it's pollinated. And there are two butterflies that do this. The great spangled fritillary, which is an orange and black beautiful butterfly, and the tiger swallowtail. And I discovered recently that all these years, people were thinking it was the eastern tiger swallowtail that flew here and was pollinating our azaleas. But it turns out that in uh, 2002, they discovered there's a new species of tiger swallowtail that lives right here called the Appalachian tiger swallowtail. And it is the major pollinator of the flame azalea. So you get this double benefit. You have the flame azaleas blooming in your garden, and then the tiger swallowtails come in from all over. And they're just gorgeous. Wonderful. I learned something about the butterflies today and the flame azaleas. Do you have any more neat tips that we can talk about? Well, I can think of one that, that I always look for when I'm on Hooper Bald and, and walking through the trails. And you'll notice that there's this weird green ball that grows on the limbs of some of the azaleas up there. And I was told um, that they were called azalea apples and that they were edible. Um, so I did some research on it, and indeed they are edible. And they're also called ghost ears, 
which I love their name. But what's really fun about the azalea apples is that if you got lost in, in the wilderness here and you didn't have enough water, azalea apples are something that you could use to help quench your thirst. They're almost all water and sugar. So you can actually break them away from the azalea bush and eat them. They taste a little bit like a sweet grape and it will give you that necessary water. It's actually a fungus, but the fungus, although it is not a good thing to have on an azalea, it very rarely kills it. They just kind of live together and you'll see them every once in a while. But I really think that that's pretty cool. It is, and I will say as a child, we would pick those and eat them. Um, I did not realize then it was a fungus, but maybe like a mushroom it was good for us. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> we would like to invite each and every one of you to come to Graham County and enjoy the flame azalea. So we think this is something special and a treat as you look through our forest and you see the beautiful orange azalea, you will understand where the term flame comes from. Um, Taylor's Greenhouse offers these for sale. So we're at 3375 Old Tallulah Road and you are welcome to stop by and purchase them. I've been asked why I love flame azaleas, why I get so passionate about them. And it goes back to a plant collector named William Bartram that came through this area at the end of the 1700s and he was collecting plants to bring back to England in some cases. And uh, he came over a mountainside and he thought the mountains were on fire and he actually was for a second really frightened and he wrote about it. And then when he realized that it was flame azaleas that he was looking at, he, he was quoted as saying that they are the most gay and brilliant shrub found in the entire world. And that's the way I feel about them. And I think everybody should have the opportunity to come here, to see them in their natural environment. And we have the Flame Azalea Festival that occurs every year here. So please come and see these wonderful, wonderful plants for yourself.